the network and we'll see you get bigger by the way. So good? Okay. So the for us the the this one's gonna be hard. Yes. Hey, I want you to say. Good, good, good. good. Um, I'm not. It's not hard. It just might be boring. That's the one. That's what I'm worried about. There's no. Um, okay. So when I draw something like this, it's this. So our software is called Commotion. And we install it on hardware like this or other routers that are compatible with OpenWRT. Do you know OpenWRT? Good. Okay. So, when we, you've talked about in other groups how you put multiple ones of these in different spots around the, around the neighborhood and they talk to each other. Right? And they can also talk to a laptop, right? So I can connect from the laptop to this. And then if this one is connected to... No, no, please. Internet. Internet, all right. So if this one is connected to this one, then this one is connected to this one, which means that this laptop can get all the way up to the internet. Good. So how does this happen? Well, we've got one connection here, right, that's connecting the laptop to the router. And then we've got one connection here that's connecting these two together. And then we've got one connection here that's connecting us to the internet. It's a wire. Yeah, exactly. So we have to make sure that these two routers are using the same parameters so that they can talk. And then we have to set some parameters for here so that the laptop can tell how to connect to it. So there's four things that we have to set in common between two nodes that are on the mesh. The first one is the channel. So we have to have the same channel. By default, Commotion has, is on channel 5. So we start with that, right? Okay, that's fine. So channel 5. Then we have a SSID. Uh, right here. ID. Good, perfect. So that is the name of the network that is joining these nodes together. We talked about it a little bit before, and what we decided on here for our network was mesh site as the SSID. So that has to match. You know, excuse me, but that was a problem. Huh? Mesh, uh, yes, we got it. According to you, that's the name of this network. Uh -huh. But uh, if some people will use it, it will be a bad transition. You know, mesh side, that means it's not the same. Mesh is a uh, word. Uh, 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 mesh is a word. Mesh is a word. Alright! It's like uh, you're connected inside and it's not silent. You're like, wait, I am inside. No, no, no. Okay. Say the Okay, so what we'll do is when when you guys leave today, we'll change that. So when you come back tomorrow, it won't be no silent. Okay. So, now, if, if this one is Saida Mesh, and this one is Mesh Saida, and they try to talk to each other. It won't work. They have to match. Okay. The next one is B SSID. And this is are you familiar with the MAC address on your computer? The the one yeah. So this looks like a MAC address. 
It's hexadecimal, it's six bytes, but it's not a MAC address. It just looks like it. And it also has to match. So this one has to match with this one. By default, Commotion will put one on your device for you that matches. There's really no reason to change it. So we're not going to. We're just going to leave it by default for this one. The last one is encryption. Encryption. She's small. Encryption. 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 So we have to decide if two things. We have to decide one, if we're going to use encryption, and two, what the password's actually going to be if we're gonna do it. So this connection doesn't necessarily have to be encrypted. It's a feature. We can turn it on or off. So if we turn it on, they have to have the same passphrase. And this uses WPA2 PSK. Yep. So it's just like it's just like uh, encryption on an access point, except it's between the two nodes. So, if you have those four things matching, I can add another one down here. Are these tiny yellow ones or just very close? Very close. And he can join the mesh if these if these match. Make sense? So now, each one of these also broadcasts an access point. And the good thing is, we can choose whatever name we want for the access point. So like when you're in the coffee and it says, um, what was the one we were at yesterday? What was the name of the place we were at yesterday? Uh, yeah, and it said, this, you know, this person's coffee. So we can set that to whatever we want. Um, what, what we thought was a good idea earlier was to name them Sayada, Sayada Leap, zero, one, two, three, four, five. So we already have a zero, and we already have a one, and so the, this one that we're going to do is two. Um, name it two. The encryption here needs to be shared among these nodes, but we can use different parameters, different configuration for over here. So if you want to have a different password, that's fine. If you want to have no password, that's also fine. Um, it, it doesn't need to match. The only thing is with these particular devices, because there's one radio on them, the channel that you choose for these, for this network, should be. It has to be. You can't. They can't be different. Um, you can try to set it in our software to something different. It doesn't matter. It's always going to be the same. So the last one that we have is this plug-in interface down here at the bottom. So in this case, we have it connected to the internet. But let's say you run like a computer lab and you've got a bunch of. Uh, power or electricity over Ethernet. So it's able to um, get all of its power over one cable, which makes it easier to install. If I had to run six cables up the roof, that would be annoying, but I just have to run one. So when you're looking at a building, you have to think about, you know, well, this building is a good site, but also where am I going to be getting power? This has to plug in to the wall somewhere in every building. It might also, it could be on the ground floor. The cable can be very long, 100 meters between this and that. So it can be very long. Uh, so you can run it all the way to the ground, but you might also just run it to the top floor, or maybe there's an outlet on the roof. I'm going to keep in mind. Um, so, where's my... I have some... 
just a worksheet. So someone pointed out last time that um, the translation on this might be a little not very good, so I apologize. Um, but uh, I'll go through this section by section, and this is sort of a an example or a template on uh, like how you can go about collecting some information for the buildings that you're looking at. So this would be one thing that I would fill out when I'm looking at one building. So you might need many of these, or maybe you use a spreadsheet to collect the information, or maybe you just have a notepad, or maybe you put the information on the map, maybe use Google Maps or something to map all the points. Or history maps or something like that. I mean, it's whatever the best tool you think for your community to plan with, that's what you should use. Um, so the information at the top is just, it's for you. So it says, like, I'm the person that did this survey at this point. You know, there's my name. The person or group in charge of the inventory, so that just means, like, you. Or whoever went and did the survey. And when I looked at the rooftop, or talked to people in the building. The other one is the next section is if you took photos. Like, okay, I took some photos and they're in my Facebook account, or they're on, I uploaded them to Flickr or something like that. Like, where to find them? Maybe not the URL, but just who to contact if there, you need to look at the photos. You may not be able to always remember, oh, was there was the outlet on that side of the roof or that side? I don't remember. But if you take photos, it might be easy to. Um, and then the everything in the box is just a. Yeah, you can't do denial. Right, right. Yeah. So I can. So I can get a lot of one So let's say I only want five of this one. This will serve, like in this case, this will serve DHCP, and this will act as a DHCP client. But they take, they take the MAC address of the hardware and turn it into unique IP addresses for each of the databases. It serves It does, yes, it does. So it serves DNS for the clients. Yeah, it doesn't do much local DNS because there's not really much for it to do. So mostly what it does is just forward, it just forwards it to the, it used to forward it to Google, to 8.8.8.8, but now we're in the Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a very good question. Because we want to say, you know, like, right, like, say that now. Right? If I'm on the match, I'm like, right now. I'm going to do it. 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 The only thing that we say that is... What did we decide we were going to set that up? Set the number with a number. Good. I'm going to type because my keyboard is different than yours. Yeah. The list of the access point. Right. So the mesh, SSID, what did we decide that was? No, it can't be. It has to match. There you go. Good. We'll change it though. And now you'll see. Remember, I was talking about the BSSID, how it looks like a MAC address? Yes. We put one in there. It's pretty easy to 
It's easy for us to remember, and it's our default, so we don't usually change it. It looks like a MAC address. It's, it can be whatever you want, or as long as it's in the right place. So we're not going to change it. Why is it get this is not uh, MAC address? Why because, use, uh, the of the because it's actually, it's not a address of a particular node, it's the address of the network itself. Okay. So, so it, needs to match, uh, it needs to match, each one needs to match. Yeah. And then you can also see in the front page we can set the channel. Uh, we're going to stay, the default that we put is 5, and the other ones we're just going to stay with 5. I guess in Tunisia you can use up to channel 14? Yes. Is that true? Yes. In the US we can't, we can only go to 11. Yeah. But do you have 5 gigahertz? Or do you just have 2.4? Okay. So, we're going to then, so we made some changes here, and I'm going to hit save and apply. And then it's going to reset. So we've changed the access point name, right? We've changed our mesh, some of our mesh parameters. We changed the, the mesh SSID, the channel, and we confirm that we want to leave this correct. So the last thing Now, the good 
If you find a waterproof box or a way to mount other equipment outside, you can use that equipment as well. So that should be fine. Um, and yeah, I think we can use this type of mount quite a lot. Like a satellite dish mount is perfect for what we need. They're often already in the right spot. They're on a rooftop, they're very high. Um, so that's something to look for when you're like, oh, there's a mount there. But then on your sheet, you can say, oh, I need a pipe to, or a pole to extend the existing satellite mount. So that's the kind of information that you can collect when you're looking at the rooftops to decide what to do. Uh, I think the is that list, to buy a list the list. Yeah, this week we might buy yeah. some of that and come back and have like 10 poles ready to go if people need that. Uh, so we will work on that. Yeah. Yeah, if we, if we cannot drill, maybe we can strap poles together. Yeah, we can find a volunteer satellite technician who would help us to drill the hole because yeah. the day we should have so maybe volunteer from the other area. Smart. The more people you can organize to help with the network, because that's what you can also when you're talking to people, they don't always need to just donate rooftop space. Maybe they have some skills or maybe they're a satellite technician and they're, you're, they're your friend and you can go and say, oh, can you help me with this? I need help tomorrow doing an installation. Can I borrow your tools? Or can you come with me? And then they... Don't really forbid it. Yeah. And then if, if they are able to help with the network, it gives you more time and uh, more people that you can use later to help grow the network. Even if they don't want to donate money or equipment or rooftop space or, or internet connections. Because everyone can help. And the idea is that the whole community can support it and the whole community can use it. Uh, always be thinking. Uh, be, think like an organizer. How can I organize people? Uh, questions? Okay. Tomorrow. We will be going over more uh, information and an activity about wireless interference and like things that block and to get you thinking more about this type of thing. Uh, and so that should be fun tomorrow. Uh, so we're working with the devices more, so you'll get to actually move around, play with commotion, and move around. We won't have to sit so much. This is good. I, thank you for sitting. I realize sometimes that cold is boring. Oh yeah, hopefully it'll be warm. Not raining. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you have more questions about wireless or any of this, find me, Will, and Ryan. Just like anything, let us know. If we don't know, we will let you know. We'll, find, we'll try and find the answer. Because <laughs> we do not know everything, but we can generally find help. I will. I think we went very fast because we didn't have to translate. So, um, there's a few ways um, you could try and hide the equipment. So you could get plastic pipes or PVC pipe, like plumbing for plumbing, and say I have this mountain on the side of the building like this. I could just run the pipe down the side of the building and have it go like, just have a pipe on the side and I mount the equipment inside. So when you're looking at the, okay. Okay. Yeah, we're pretty much done. Then it just looks from the observer just like a pipe sitting there and you can, you can kind of disguise it. Yeah, PVC is fine, plastic is fine. No metal. Of course. That is if they will get on the roof, they will steal the satellite dish before skipping the roof. Because they want to really understand how it is. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because uh, what we have is uh, a building with uh, four uh, floor, uh, floors, okay. each floor contains uh, eight apartments. So, okay. So there are many people that yeah. use the roof? Yeah, there are many students who use the building, so... Well, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, one thing would be to talk to everyone in the building so they know that it's an important thing and it's for them. It's for them and it's for the community. Maybe that won't work. Maybe they don't care. Uh, Thank you for coming. So much fun. Oh, who's going to translate for me? <laughs> so, as you know, we'll come here tomorrow, same time between 10 and 4. What do I should do? Is that a And also next weekend, the same time, Saturday or Sunday. So tomorrow what we hope to do is uh, go outside with some of the routers. Uh, we have battery packs that can charge the routers so we can walk around with them. And we'd really like to connect a few rooftops if we, if we have the right connections. So you have uh, two homeworks. Maybe more. <laughs> From me. Andy can give you others. Uh, one, think about uh, rooftops that we could go tomorrow to put equipment. And talk to other people, your friends and family, and invite them to come tomorrow. We don't want only technical people, we want people to do everything. <laughs> Do you have anything to add? No, no. Yeah, I would just say that I had a lot of fun today. I'm really happy that all of you could make it. Um, my homework was Ryan's first homework. Just think about rooftops, places inside it that we can install. Um, tomorrow would be great, even if it's not permanent. We can test and see if we can make links to the battery packs on the ground. Um, but also permanent places. We want the community network to start growing tomorrow. So hopefully we can do that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Was just uh, we want um, to start thinking about places that we can install Mention. permanently Mention. to make the community network grow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, then we're good. Um, we also wanted uh, to um, just go around quickly and mention one thing that you thought was really interesting about today, or that you really liked. Yeah. Uh, I'll start. I it was... Could be, uh, vocal or related. You already asked the yeah, the papers. My favorite thing was that we had uh, kids <laughs> <laughs> participating today. It was a good surprise uh, and it was really nice. <laughs> really thank you for coming. <laughs> Okay, I'm um, at the third workshop because it was awesome. Well, personally, I got a couple of things to share. I like the same thing that you like to learn. Uh, personally, I came here like uh, my curiosity. I was not really, uh, I haven't really the intention to learn something, but I was really attached to those kids. They were really good, you know. I had um, a bad, uh, like a bad idea about them, but they interact with the workshops. They are, they were even suggesting us 
lot of things to do in the first workshop or the second workshop or with when they have nothing to do. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the second thing I really learned, I'm sorry for that. I really, I really learned something today. I came like uh, with no idea about what is it, about what is hardware, what those hardwares are. I already told you that I'm fond of uh, softwares. I'm a geek but not on hardwares. And I would like to really thank you for your time. <laughs> Translation, uh, the, first, uh, the most thing I like today is the, the map we made with Ryan. And I loved Ryan and I had so much fun with him. <laughs> See, kids don't like you. I know. <laughs> I, so I'll, I guess I'll, I'll go next. Uh, I learned today that even all the way away from my, my home, people still think I look like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> to great lengths to show me how much I look like Abraham Lincoln. Um, no, I learned so much today about um, how everybody wants to use the mesh network and about and what I learned also from your questions was the areas that I need to improve on in presentation and the areas that our software needs to improve to be more clear. So thank you for all of the questions and all of the feedback you gave me, and I think we're gonna keep getting to do that. So, thank you. 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 بون قال لي اجبو الوقت ما اجبت والخدمة ما بعد اجبت وانه حتى بعيد من امريكا فما ناس تقولوا انه يشبه لبرهام لينكون فما شكون مدوا تصوير برهام لينكون اللي هو رئيس امريكا قديم اما تقتل قال يشبهوا له برشا ما اجبتوش 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 ما Today, actually, I really loved uh, the workshops, and I'm just happy to be introduced to a new technology. And thank you, guys. Thank you. That's it. Hi, Asmi. Asmi, Asmi, Asmi. Has been the if we that's it. Mm -hmm. My name is Emily Gish. See that? I love it. 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 I like it. I love it. I like it. I love 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 it. I I loved uh, so much the uh, technology where how to uh, to have the internet from uh, the LG 40 uh, LG to uh, to uh, the energy to link it. Uh, I always read uh, about it and it was so amazing. So I loved uh, what will uh, also the technology and uh, tomorrow we'll see the, this and uh, thank you for all the Andrea. You see the experts, they like when the kids, they like... Uh, oh, I know. <laughs> uh, so, uh, first I like the food. I'm <laughs> loving <laughs> Okay, second I like the, uh, the Lego part. That was uh, amazing. But most of all I like the commotion tour. Uh, it's interesting for me and uh, I think I will use it uh, uh, at the office and uh, the workshop with uh, Andy was uh, very helpful uh, and uh, thank you all for, for this. Okay, so
First of all, I welcome you in Tunisia. Welcome again. So uh, the second time, I guess, most of you to, to come to Tunisia. I really uh, liked, as an open source guy, I really like the open source aspect uh, in the uh, commotion, uh, commotion technology, like the open, uh, open WRT and the software used uh, in this technology. And uh, I also liked uh, the sharing fact of, uh, of this technology and how it is used to help people uh, all over the area and uh, with especially the local applications and uh, as we say sharing is caring so yeah that's it. Mm. Uh, uh, I like very much the, the technology used I think that uh, it uh, may make us uh, use uh, view, have a different perspective about technology and I'm uh, really uh, I, I want to use it and I want to learn how to use it. So thank you for coming and sharing with us. Uh, I don't speak English. Uh, <laughs> uh, merci pour vous. Vous êtes les bienvenus chez nous à Sayada. C'est une bonne journée. Uh, intéressé par ce workshop et cette nouvelle technologie. Vous êtes les bienvenus. Thank you again and welcome anytime. Look, uh, my name is Nordina. Welcome to Tunisia, welcome to Saeda. Nice to meet you all. Thank you all for uh, simply fate, uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, workshop. And uh, thank you. <laughs> Thank all of you. Uh, it was a pleasure to uh, meet you. Uh, we learned so many things uh, today, uh, and I think it's jo it isn't just a network. It's a way to get all the people connected, uh, all the people excited. So I think it's a good uh, experience and will be successful. Thanks. Uh, I thank all members for their helpful and. Uh, You know, it was great to uh, learn about all the different applications that you can put on this uh, network and how the community can use them, how the community can leverage what they uh, usually do on their own but do it with other people and share things. I think it's a good way to share things and it has great potential. Uh, I like it, the local attendance here, the community aspect of the workshops. Thank you, guys. Thanks to you. Bom, a parte da formação é dura, tecnicamente, eu não tinha suivi a formação, mas o ponto de vista ambiente é que é super. I like the efforts of the association of Cinebar, how it works on uh, promoting those technologies to people like that. And I can show that I'm not the better English speaker here, so why am I translator? <laughs> uh, so, thanks for all uh, to this uh, great opportunity. I want just to say uh, this is just the beginning. And we, have, we still have really uh, big, uh, big things to do and a uh, 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 great work to, uh, to continue. Thank you. Oh, just me. Um, I forgot about me. Um, I was really excited to see how engaged and uh, fearless everyone was about the 
the information and the subject matter, people had great questions. Everyone was really uh, engaged. And so thank you. Thank you. So we'll see everybody tomorrow at uh, 10 a.m. Um, we're not leaving soon, so if you want to stay around and play with the equipment or just talk. Yeah. Yeah. If you have questions or didn't like something, <laughs> complaints, like th things you want to know more about, also come and, and talk to us. Let us know. And we'll see if we can uh, put more of that in. Thanks.